As was just said, I worked for a while in the former Soviet Union. They're very focused on results. They, to achieve results, they set up plans, three-year, five-year, 10-year plans. Plans are linked to targets, numerical targets. And these numerical targets are linked to punishment. You don't get them, you lose your job, you get humiliated, you get shouted at, it's a big problem. What happens? Fear is in the system. You can feel it, you can touch it. Targets get met. But there, a, a world opens up. There's an official world and there's an unofficial world. The official world, targets are being met. The unofficial world is, none of this is real. The reality is, we're cheating. The numbers don't mean anything. Uh, and the quality of everything is dropping. But we're the West. We're different. We're enlightened. We have a different way of working. We motivate with incentives, bonuses, rewards. This is good, this is different, this is better. I understand there's some sponsors here today uh, who've helped, helped organize this uh, event. Suppose they had offered 10,000 euros if we can get 140 participants here today. The organizers have worked very hard and we get 135. How does Ted feel here today? How does Ted X feel? Disheartened upset, angry, bonuses and rewards linked to targets can have as much a demotivating effect as a motivating one. And next time, I assure you, TEDx will be very frightened and they will do everything in their power to hit the target they've been set by the sponsor. It's a system of fear. Both are the same. Now, I want to take you now to Britain where we set up a quality improvement project. Tony Blair, in his wisdom, noted, with quality improvement, you look for client satisfaction. Patients are waiting a long time. These are my own numbers. I'm just giving you an idea of what it would look like. Along the bottom is a set of hospitals, and the waiting time is between two and 10 hours. And he decided he would do something, and he would set a target, and he set it at four. Four hours will be it. Bonus, support if you get under four hours waiting time for the patients in the emergency department. Sounds good, sounds reasonable. It sounds like he's hoping that these top numbers above the four are going to drop to four and it'll work. But there are very negative points to this. First of all, the ones at the bottom well, they can increase their waiting times now, can't they? Now, supposing the bonus is big, and I'm really doing well and I keep my waiting times short, well, I'm not going to share that information with anybody, am I? Because I get a big bonus for this. So we stop sharing, we have secrets. Supposing I'm near the line, well, I'm close. I've got 130 participants here today, can't I just bump it up? Maybe we'll move our numbers somehow, we'll get there. We'll cheat the numbers. What if I'm up above, and very much up above, which is the goal of it all, really? Well, maybe I take staff off the other wards. Maybe I, uh, I, um, I push doctors to see patients too quickly. I get my target. So, I want you to note two particular things here. Targets lead to fear, fear of failure, and it leads to people adjusting what they're doing to achieve the target. And 
they even make decisions to damage the system, to hit the target. The, the second point is that in doing this and using this way of thinking, we actually lose the idea that we're caring for patients. We focus on our targets. We lose the big picture. But I want to go deeper than that, and I want to ask, so what is a target? Now, Tony Blair, in his wisdom, decided four hours. But why didn't he choose six? If it's a smart indicator, it's got to be realistic and achievable. Well, six would be realistic and achievable. Why not aim for best practice and go for two? Why not push everybody, but is that so achievable? Why not reduce everybody by 10%? Four options for setting the target. What's right? What's wrong? There's a, an expression I've heard here in Germany. A target is a target is a target. There's no, there's, it, it must be true. It must be sure. Uh, there is no questioning it. But today, I'm here to question it. Targets are arbitrary. And actually, there comes a point where what we are doing is we can be judging the designer of the target, not the worker trying to implement. Now, you want your money's worth today. So I'm going to show you an alternative way. It's very brief. Here, we're going to look at life in a different way. Let's accept that there is variation among these hospitals. Instead of setting a target, let's analyze this data. Let's see what it means. And now, as we do this, and I'm going to put myself out on a limb, I'm going to say this is the right thing to do. Set limits. Understand that some hospitals are faster, some are slower. And this is normal. We are not controlling variation. We're cooperating with it. But once we somehow set some sort of limits, we begin to see some are above and some are below the limit. Now, the right way to handle all this, start to understand this data. Start to say, well, why? Why is this one so slow? So many patients waiting so long. Why are they so fast? Let's deal with that. Let's understand. And it may be that at the top, you, it's a, let's start at the bottom. It's a rich area. Doctors like to work there. Patients are healthy. There's not much going on. It's easy to hit under two hours. What about the top? It's a poor area. No doctors want to work there. It's underfunded. And they're hitting that. Is anything wrong? Will the target help anything? In fact, under Tony Blair's idea, we punish the top and we reward the bottom. But we're clever. This is good quality improvement. So it's not targets. It's understanding, which will lead to good results. But this is scary for managers. No targets. Why should workers work? They get lazy. Uh, but I assure you that most of the time, 90% of people want to work and do a good job. It's normal in our lives. I'll promise you if I ask you today, most of you are like that. I went to a country in Africa. Maternal childhood mortality rates are high. I went to a clinic. I said, any problems? They showed me a paraffin lamp. It had no rubber seal. It breaks after one week can't replace that seal. It's been given by the Ministry of Health through a procurement system. I said, so what do you need it for? Well, we, at night, we deliver babies. So if it's not working, what do you use? A torch? No. We use our mobile phones. Real. Blame the workers. They're bad. Control them with targets. Have we understood what's really going on? It's an easy way to manage. It's not an easy way to get results. So it boils down to this. Do we trust our workers or don't we trust them? 
If we don't trust them, let's set targets, let's control. Do it with rewards, do it with punishment, I don't care, it's the same thing. Or do we trust them? Do we listen? Do we hear what the workers are saying? Do we respond? Any of you here, now Germany is very strong in your car industry. I'm guessing a few of you are related to the car industry. And you'll tell me this is nothing new. Which is great, and I'm very happy. I would may raise a question, because I have some friends in the car industry, and I'm hearing that this is very much used in the technical industrial departments, but sales hasn't much heard about this. But in the health industry, I assure you, we have no idea. We are going down a road now, pay for performance, results-based financing. We are heading in targets, the target-driven health systems, and we're taking this around the world. Every project has to have one according to certain donors. It's the big new deal. Now, I know we want new stuff today, but I want to say, raise a big question mark as we think about this. Now, personally, I, uh, I take on contracts. Uh, and often, the contracts I take on have been given a set of targets. It might be a three-month contract, a three-year contract. And when I start the project, I discover that all the indicators and targets don't actually make sense. I go to explain it to the manager. Target is a target is a target. And I have to do it, and I've signed my contract. When I signed my contract, I didn't know what was going to happen. But now I go there, and with my expertise, I know this is nonsense. But I'm told I have to do it, because that's the way we work. This is modern the West. So I will do it. I will achieve the targets. I will manipulate my data. I will damage the system, and I will get the targets. The problem with everything I'm saying today is that it's very difficult for me to prove it. You see, the targets are always reached, especially when I say, and when I, let me get this clear for you all. When I say target, I mean a numerical target linked to a consequence. I don't mean a goal to produce something, make a good car, do something. I mean a numerical target, I get, I get a consequence for hitting it, or not. So I will achieve. So, so we again and again, you link a target to a consequence, we hit the target. And we think targets work and pay for performance and results-based financing will show you it works, because it always works. But I promise you, from my own experience, that yes, I'll train 10,000 workers, but it'll take an hour for each, and they won't do anything different. Yes, I'll write my consultancy reports, but no one's going to read them. Yes, we'll spend the money, and we'll buy the equipment, but who gives a damn what the quality of the equipment is? We've spent the money, and we've hit our targets for spending. It's the way we do things. I think every project should come with a warning. Targets are hazardous to the health of your goals. I will say that again. Targets are hazardous to the health of your goals. And what are our goals? What is the big picture for us? Now, is it just that we meet the targets? We get paid. We use our money effectively. Our aid money. Or is our big goal to achieve long-lasting results that result in benefit for the recipients? I continue to be involved in individual health projects where all the boxes are ticked. Targets are met, payments are made, services are provided, trainings are given, processes are set in place, 
but nothing is working. It's not doing what it was meant to do. It's like a puzzle. You know the type where you put it together on the table. We have got the box. We've put the pieces in the box. We have the right pieces. We turn all the pictures up the right way so we can see the pattern. And we don't put it together. We have everything and we have nothing. We do, we hit all the targets, and yet when you look at the project, you say we have nothing. The workers know what is going on. There's a saying, uh, again, in the auto industry, the car industry here in Germany, uh, um, the workers rule the shop floor and the managers listen. That's the way it is. Now, can we not apply that outside to the management of our projects? Listen to the workers, listen to the contractors. When we're worried, don't distrust us. Trust us more. Five or ten percent of us may not be good. Find, a, find those of us who are good, listen to us, change the design of your project if we think it's right. Even if we're being paid, and even if you think we're trying to get out of something. I want to finish now by just changing my slide. Uh, I didn't even show that. Uh, uh, so I have more to tell you <laughs> if you're ever interested later on, on uh, getting better results. But here's, here's the slide to finish now. Um, let's change that. This is the answer to my, the title of my presentation. Organizations should seek to understand if they really want the result. But think about it opposite. If we don't want the result, don't seek to understand. Let's carry on with targets.